Jacob, what's the what's the read on that uh, on your long run there at the end? Oh, it's just the defensive end. If he crashes, I pull it. If he stays wide enough, I hand it off. Did you go into that thinking this guy is definitely going to crash or what? Uh, we went in knowing a little bit that if we run that zone read play, there's a good chance um, that I'd be able to pull, especially me because I haven't seen that on tape at all. So I, I knew there was a good chance. Just being able to do that, uh, you know, we, you've, you've watched plenty of uh, cardiac bears around <laughs> here when uh, Jason would bring them back from behind. But to be able to do that in the final minute, just uh, uh, being able to pull off that win, what was that like? Yeah, it felt really good. Um, obviously, we, we did a really good job in the first half on offense, scoring on all four drives, um, late two-minute field goal. And then we kind of came out slow in the second half. And then in the fourth quarter, I missed two blatant wide open throws, and it kind of let them back um, in the game, which was frustrating for me. But Coach uh, Petrino did a really good job settling me down. And I knew we'd have a good chance to get the ball back and go down there and score. What's that like when he's settling you down? Uh, he just he knows I'm hard on myself, and he comes over there and just talk about it real quick. And he's like, "Move on, let's go win this game. We need you." And um, that that helped me. And then obviously, guys on the team too told me they believed in me and uh, helped me go out there and execute. Lance, second week in a row, you make the, 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 the game deciding play. Last week it was the long screen that you broke down the sideline and cemented Bay to catch over the middle. What's it like to know that when there's the games on the line, you come up and you, you pick up the clutch number? Yeah, it's cool. Um, I give, I mean, I give credit to obviously Coach Nick for just putting me in that position, making it easy for me. Honestly, at the end, just having to catch the ball and and uh, getting to make a play at the end of the last game, and that's something I, you know, kind of went to him after the end of last year. I was just like, I just want to have the opportunity to be a difference maker on offense, and he's given me that opportunity. I'm, I'm grateful. Why did you feel like you could go to him and say, Hey, Coach? When you need somebody, I'm going to answer that call every time. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's my third year here now, and so and he's been here the whole time. And so just building that relationship and getting comfortable with him. You know, my first year, I was just kind of get by, do my job. And then um, so now I'm at the point where I'm like, I want to, you know, help us win big time. So you guys are both from Rockwall, Texas. Yep. Were you guys aware of each other? And I, I, there's a three-year age gap, I think, but I mean, did you remember him or, you, you know, other? Well, I probably knew he was a quarterback, and so he was a quarterback when when uh, he was a senior and I was a freshman. So I, I knew a little about about him, but he probably didn't know anything about me. I would I would still when I was in high school I didn't because he was freshman when I was a senior, but um, I would still follow those games and definitely follow the Rockwell Rockwell Heath game, um, and he would always put up numbers against us. So then I kind of got to know who he was, and then when I transferred here, I obviously figured out the connection, and we've gotten really close since then. How are you always so wide open on those plays? It's running down the middle of the field. I know. You think they covered it something. Yeah, it's it's just it's stealing, really. I think you can do so much with tight ends, honestly, because they have to account for us in the run game. And then so if you, you know, can can uh, make them think that we're running the ball and then we're passing it, it's, it makes it easy. So. When you play a team like Youngstown State, you know, the time of possession, do you kind of know, like, our, our chances are limited. you got to go out there and make the most of them? What's it kind of like this? Having to kind of sit there and wait for your time. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that first half we, I mean, we only had four drives and one of them was with a minute left. So we really knew that we were going to have to take advantage of um, the drives we did get. And I think we did a really good job of that in the first half because, I mean, it could have been a tough game if we would have had a couple three and outs in the first half for sure. Coach talked about, right, you guys have played five games. Two of them you really could have won. These last three in a row you finally put together for the first time since 2021. You know, what do you guys say about the growth and maturity from last year? How has this team become a team that can beat some teams and surprise some people? Yeah, I think it's just, um, like you said, growth from last year to this year. We have a lot of the same pieces. Um, guys have grown up and matured, and then we also understand our system and we understand what it takes to win. I think we really just needed to get that first one that first close game went out of the way, and we understand that feeling, and we understand what it takes. Um, and I feel really comfortable about us coming out on top in these close ball games. When you say we know what it takes to win, does that mean you get rid of the nerves? You just trust the memory? Like, like what do you mean when you say that? Yeah, there's certain um, situ like situational football. We understand what we need to do, when we need to get out of bounds, when we need to clock it. Um, defensively, understanding, hey, if we get off the field right here on this three, uh, on this three and out or whatever, we're going to give our offense the ball. Just understanding what the other team's trying to do to stop you also. Like that last run, I knew they were in man coverage. I knew if that end came down, I was going to be able to like go run and have a chance to get a big play. So just for me, it's situational football and then preparation and understanding what it takes to win. Lance, uh, Lance can you talk about the, the collective mindset of the pass catchers? Uh, last year, you guys had a go-to receiver 
Braylon, but now how have you guys had to come together as a group? Uh, yeah, I mean, we knew that that we'd kind of have to fill that void, and we honest, I mean, I think we think we didn't think it'd be a problem when we have you know guys like J. Rob and Wood and myself and Key, all guys that have been here, and then we brought in some people as well, and and so we just knew that you know each game it could be somebody else too. It's not just you know so much pressure on one person. We all can we all can make a difference in the passing game. And Jacob, just to follow up from your perspective on how you've seen those guys come together as a group, and you have so many options now. Yeah, it's really nice to be able to have a lot of different options, and they all have different skill sets, which is great. <clears throat> some of them really good route runners. Some of them just really understand football and make every single play, and some of them can fly down the field. And then guys like Lance and Gary can get open also, and then Jacardier and uh, Jab out of the backfield do a great job. So I think we have a lot of guys that all complement each other, and it makes it really nice for me. Lance, what's he like in a in game winning drive offense? Just kind of what's his demeanor, and is it any different than the rest of the game? Or just Who, whose demeanor? Jacobs. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, he knows he's he's pumping us up before the drive, just understanding, like, you know, that it's on us to win the game. Like, at, in that position, our defense got a huge stop at the end, which, I mean, that's all we can ask for to get the ball back. And, you know, he did it with himself running however far he ran. <laughs> and, and I ask you, if you're, how you always seem to find yourself open, but what's it like once you get past? like the second level of the defense I'm just like oh, but here I am again or just kind of what, what's that feeling like or um, don't trip yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, usually I think I mean if I have a lot I'm usually hoping I don't have to run too far <laughs> and if I am I know somebody's going to catch me so Jacob were you mad you didn't get the end zone there um yeah, I thought I had a chance, <laughs> uh, but no, it's all right. I'm glad I didn't lose the ball at the end. I didn't see that guy behind me coming and punching it out, so I'm, I'm really thankful that didn't happen. Um, but yeah, I, I thought I had a chance to get in there, but it's all right. And just you and Nick um, Trino, just the what the relationship you guys have built, we're seeing. You know, it, he's designing plays where guys are wide open, mm -hmm. whether it's Lance, whether it's um, your your running backs out of the backfield. Uh, you see it all the time. Just. What is it about his play calling that makes your life a little easier? Yeah, he does a great job. The whole staff does a really good job game planning every week. And then um, I've been here long enough. I understand what we're kind of trying to get to and understand what plays have a chance for that to happen. Um, and then when plays aren't wide open, then it's kind of up to us to make some plays, extend plays. Um, we do a really good job scheming stuff up, but then we also had some plays today where we kind of had to do it on our own, and it was awesome. But Coach, me and Coach Nick are um, obviously – Really close. I've been here for a long time, and I love having him as my OC. Jacob, to go from last year, you played partial season, you get injured, it's over. To go from where you guys were last year and where you were to being now 3-2, and two, going into the bye with a winning record for the first time in a while, and what's it mean to that locker room? Yeah, it means a lot. I think it means even more to just start conference play 1-0. Um, those first four games are kind of, you know, get ready for this Missouri Valley gauntlet that we have, and we have a lot of respect for everyone in the conference. Um, and being able to start it off 1-0 and and have a bye week coming up where we can kind of get our rest. Um, and then going in the rest of Missouri Valley play, we're going we're gonna to be feeling confident, but also know that it's going to be a grind, um, but that we have the tools to do it.